Hi everyone, welcome back to, or no, I don't like this. <laughs> you have no idea how bad I am with introductions, how many times I have to repeat an introduction. I'm always like, hey. <laughs> Hello, I'm Maria, welcome to See and Me, my channel. Today I'm here with a special guest, Kat, from My Vegan Experiment, the name of her uh, YouTube channel and also website. You should definitely check it out, it's really cool. She talks about all things environment, mostly related to scuba diving, ocean and also some really cool tip tips for veganism and just overall really cool environmental stuff so make sure to check her channel out it will be down in the description box below we will also have one or even potentially more videos on her channel uh, so make sure to check them also out also down in the description box below so today uh, we will be talking about differences between scuba diver instructor and marine biologist. The first thing I would like to address is just to get to know uh, each other a bit better or for you to get to know us a bit better. Why did you become a scuba diver instructor? How did this happen? It all started when I was about 12 actually. <laughs> a long time ago. I went on a field week which is kind of a week away with my school to the south of France. I grew up in Geneva, Switzerland and we went to the south of France to a field trip and one of the activities on this trip was a discover scuba dive which was an introduction to diving and it was just on this beach there was nothing there but this instructor kind of like grabbed me and was taking me through and I don't know I don't to this day I have no idea how he did, how he did this but he found an octopus and he gave it to me and I was sitting there in like two meters of water 12 years old holding this octopus and in my head it's just these alarm bells were going I want to give people octopus. That's <laughs> and um, basically since then, you know, I always looked for universities. I studied physics, so I, I did the analytical thing and compared the best physics university to scuba diving opportunities um, and finally settled on Brisbane, Australia, University of Queensland, where I did my undergrad and where I did my scuba diving instructor course and since then been teaching diving there. Cool. Mine, uh, why I became a marine biologist, I since, since I remember really, I love the ocean. And when I was really little, I wanted to be a dolphin trainer, don't judge me. <laughs> didn't we all though? Yeah, yeah, didn't we all, it's true. I wanted to swim with Flipper and jump around and free Willy. Yep. The first time I, I actually thought of marine biology as a career, not a dolphin trainer or whatever, was because of a series called Ocean Girl, Australian series. Really? I don't know, do you know it? No. Okay, it's it's cool. I mean, I don't know, I haven't seen it uh, since uh, for uh, many years, maybe it's not that cool. I'm gonna go find it now. <laughs> I'm afraid to watch it again, actually. You don't, just leave it. <laughs> yeah, maybe I shouldn't. There was about a girl who br uh, could breathe underwater and talk to humpback whales. So for me that was incredible. But there was That's a marine biologist. Yeah. <laughs> you talked with humpback whales? <laughs> but a humpback whale did talk to me. I could insert a clip here. So the, there was this and there was a marine biologist and I thought, oh that's cool, she works with humpback whales, that's what I want to do. And so yeah, then I studied biology, marine biology, and now I'm here doing my PhD in marine microbiology. It's not whales, but it's still related to the ocean somehow. So that's it. What uh, kind of person should you be to be a diving instructor? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think one of the biggest things you have to, to be uh, to be a good scuba diving instructor is to, to love the ocean, of course, and to, to love people, and to love teaching, and to see people progress from being terrified of water and, you know, having panic and fear, because as I was just telling Maria, one out of four of my students at the very beginning will panic and will try and swim to the surface because they're afraid, and this is perfectly normal. And you need to be the kind of person who can handle that calmly, so you need to be composed, responsible, and really willing to give time and patience to see these panicky individuals become divers. And it, it, it's a journey, so yeah, you need to be patient and just... Good at communication. Good at communication and be excited for that point where you see them you know, uh, have their li uh, lies light up, <laughs> have their eyes light up by seeing, you know, their first parrotfish or their first Christmas tree worm or even sea cucumbers. Like, they'll see a sea cucumber and just lose their mind. Oh, yeah. They're so excited. Oh, and it just. So many in the North Adriatic, all 
cucumbers everywhere. I was like, oh, okay, that's good. That's cool that they get excited by everything. Yeah, and you, you need to be open to that and um, be willing to like experience this excitement over and over again. So. Yeah. People person. Yeah. People person helps. For a marine biologist, um, you don't have to be so much of a people person if you work in academia. Now I'm talking about marine biology as a scientist, as a science field in academia. You need to love what you do, definitely. You need to be ready to kind of give a bit of your life to the job at some point because it's a very, very competitive field. And it's because it's also a, a growing in popularity and there's a lot of people who want to study marine biology in the, the many different, exactly, so <laughs> in many different fields of marine biology and it becomes very competitive and as we all know, the more competitive it gets, the more you kind of have to struggle through to reach higher positions because you will be competing with so many other people. So it is a job that requires a lot of you but if you love it, it's totally worth it. Um, so again, you need to be a person who's passionate. And you also, very, very important, you need to be curious. You need to want to understand things. Not only love the ocean, but you need to have an inquisitive mind and you need to want to understand things because if you don't, then you're not gonna be so passionate about science. So have being curious and questioning the world is a very important characteristic, I would say, in the scientist and also in the marine biologist. How do you think your work can help the ocean? Uh, so, you guys don't know me, probably. Um, on my channel I talk a lot about sustainability and conservation and it's really my biggest focus and the reason I started a YouTube channel. And it really started with realizing <laughs> Sorry. I've been able to impact a lot of people's perceptions of the ocean, perceptions of things like sharks and rays and pollution, because people protect what they love and people can only love what they know. So I have the opportunity to show people and to help people get to know the ocean, get to know how coral reefs work, how uh, marine animals interact and how our impacts affect them. So I kind of just open people's eyes up to what exists below the waves, gives, give them that introduction to it, and then, you know, sneak in some facts, sneak in some conservation things about decreasing plastic use, decreasing um, eating meat, uh, decreasing using polluting agents and using more natural substances, microplastics, just um, kind of, you know, just open their eyes up to how their individual impacts can actually affect the fish we're diving with or the creatures that we see. Yeah, but this is a very direct uh, impact on the ocean's health and it's very visible. As a scientist and as a marine biologist, you don't see so much the effect of your work in the ocean's health because what we do is research. So we, we try to understand how things work and basically science is trying is trying to gather as much uh, understanding of the world around us as possible. In the case of a marine biologist is marine life and marine ecosystems and we build up this knowledge. And then this knowledge is important then for politics, environmentalist laws to be passed, for conservation purposes. So if you want to, for instance, uh, protect a certain species, you need to know what is the behavior of this species, where does this species normally migrate, which places uh, geographically should we focus more if we want to protect a species. So this is just a very one example in which our the knowledge we build might be important then for helping the ocean. As a scientist you don't really have a usually a direct contact with um, the with people. I mean you have direct contact with people but it's not with the public and also it's not such a direct effect. I went a bit in circles now. <laughs> Basically building up knowledge and then this knowledge can be used when needed for many many things. Build knowledge, try Sh and share knowledge. Share knowledge. Exactly. <laughs> try and pass it on. I think the biggest way really anyone helps the oceans is by helping the general public or more people understand them. And um, I think this is something so fantastic that Maria does on this channel 
is, you know, really shares her little, inside her little bubble world, which is usually so locked away. And I know yes. I found her channel because I was like, oh, what do marine biologists do? <laughs> and yeah, she gave insight to that. And yeah, actually, um, it's a big topic in science now, science communication, because until very recently, the scientists, uh, until not so long ago, right? They like stay in their bubble. Yeah, there's still a lot of bridges that have to be created yeah. between the scientists and the scientific world and the people out there. Mm -hmm. There's a big gap, and they like, and this is, and now there's a lot of people starting to do a science communication, which I think is really cool. In scientists mm -hmm. that are really interested now in like showing this with social media and everything. Social media has been a great platform to, to share just little tidbits of, you know, things yeah. we've learned um, to, to a much bigger public because, you know, you can add a scientific fact to a nice photo of a whale shark and many more people are going to look at it yeah. than read a scientific paper. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I understand. I reading a scientific you. paper it can be really... <laughs> I see not through them. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no. I, I mean, if you're not in the field, and sometimes they use this. This is the thing about scientific papers: is there's a lot of uh, technical terminology, and if you're not in the specific field, you have no clue what they're talking about. Jargon. Even me. I mean, I find if I start reading a paper that's slightly outside what I am or the things I know more about. I have to Google all the time, <laughs> what does this word mean? This is it for this video. Make sure to check out Kat's My Vegan Experiment channel and the videos all down below. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it and share it around if you want to share it around. And uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Ciao!